Tonight, 7.15, September 22nd, 1955. We add another sentence to the long history of London. London with all its familiar landmarks, the Houses of Parliament, Westminster Abbey, with its banners and tombs, part of so many royal occasions. The tower with its dungeons and jewels. The battle-scarred temple. The quiet of Lincoln's Inn. The broad reaches of the parks. The palace of our queen. The teeming bridges. The arches, terraces and statues. A thousand years ago it was here, a tiny village on the river whose brimming curves today reflect the majesty of one of the most mighty and venerable cities of the world. Twice it has almost been destroyed by fire. A monument marks one, the gaping scars so many of us well remember in the making mark another. Out of the one a new cathedral arose and London would have been rebuilt had Wren but had his way. Out of the other, the beauty of his masterwork stood clear. Today, the old city has spread out south to Croydon, north to Highgate, east to Ilford, west to Uxbridge, to become the giant we know. A hundred books would not contain its history. A thousand more, the work of poets, painters, statesmen, and musicians who have walked its streets and made their masterpieces here. From an observatory on Greenwich Hill springs time itself. The longitude of the whole world roots from this spot. Law and statesmanship have been distilled and sent out from the offices of Whitehall to the four corners of the world. And history is still in the making. In 1896, an Italian called Marconi sent an impulse out into the ether which was picked up a mile or so away. Soon the world was agog with invisible messages passing with the speed of light around the world. In 1936, another strange and new antennae rose from a crumbling amusement hall called Alexandra Palace. From here, the first public television service in the world was launched and in less than 20 years gained such momentum that today one home in three throughout the British Isles sits spellbound several hours a day before a magic tube. On the 30th of July last year, after much argument, a challenger was admitted to the lists to question this 20-year monopoly. The Independent Television Act was passed by both Houses of Parliament. There shall be an authority, it said, whose function shall be to provide television broadcasting services additional to those of the British Broadcasting Corporation and of high quality, both as to transmission and as to the matter transmitted. Another paragraph was added to the history of British television. In January this year, the contractors charged with the execution of this new Elizabethan enterprise had nothing more than paper letterheads and hope. Now, nine months later, something approaching a miracle of organization and design has been accomplished. Studios, staff and technical equipment have all been assembled. A new public service is about to be launched over the rooftops of old London. It is our desire and hope in these last dwindling minutes before we pass into the exacting domain of public life that in the years to come, we may preserve one of the proudest boasts of England, the rights of free speech, fair play, our own particular brand of decency and tolerance, our own particular brand of humor and common sense. Zero hour is on us. Here, high above the heart of old London, we salute you. Ready the OB vans at Guildhall? Ready the vision mixers, sound mixers, cameramen, directors? Ready all those who have made this possible? Ready, our friends, you citizens of London. Wish us Godspeed. Over to Guildhall. Good luck all. Here we go. Take it, Master Control.